Our next film is called Shirley Valentine. It's based on the hit London and Broadway play that was a one-woman monologue about one woman's battle for self-respect. She's very glib as she talks to us about the everyday strains in her marriage. I always have my tea at 6 o'clock. So just think how exciting it would be if for once you had it at quarter past 6. Just make the headlines. World exclusive. Joe eats late. I think you're going around the bend. Oh, I do hope so. I've always wanted to travel. Deciding she needs a little change in her life, Shirley plans a trip to Greece and needs a passport photo. I think sex is like supermarkets. You know, overrated. Just a lot of pushing and shoving and you still come out with very little at the end. That's a bit phony. Eventually, though, Shirley and a friend make it to Greece where Shirley falls for a colorful restaurant owner. You come now, you, you late. I, I put um, food, wine on boat, and I wait down, but you don't come. Then, a realization, um, um, Shirley and me, we are uh, going to bed so late last night, um, probably she's uh, overslept. That's Tom Conti behind the mustache, and Pauline Collins repeats her Tony Award-winning role as Shirley Valentine. This is one of very few films that, for me, got better as it went along. That rarely happens. Shirley's speeches are gimmicky in the beginning, full of obviously written jokes. You can tell it's a play. Later, however, the jokes quiet down as we see Shirley relax on vacation. We see this very uptight character make a convincing argument for going easy on oneself, for giving oneself the time to breathe, time to relax, time to stop some of the negative behavior that keeps people from enjoying life. My only wish is that more of the obvious jokes had been cut from the script. My only wish is that the script had been cut and the movie had never been made. This, to me, was one of the most appallingly banal and painful movies I've seen in a long time, and I hated it from beginning to end. I hated it at the beginning when she's talking to the wall. I mean, that might work on the stage, but when she, isn't that right, wall? I want to say, you know, I, I wanted to give her some advice. Uh, there's only a wall there. And at the, at the, at the, then when she meets the guy in Greece, obviously they had to get an Englishman, Tom Connie, to play the role. No self-respecting Greek would play that incredible collection of Hellenic lover cliches. I was, you know, going around with his mustache, I want to take you for a boat ride, you know, and, and the, the, the sun sets as they're embracing each other in the surf. And then what happens? The happy ending is she gets a job as a waitress in his restaurant after he jilts her because he's a gigolo. I don't know that that's the... That's the ending. Well, a, there's, a little, there's a little coda at the end. When her husband turns up again, there's one scene that works. But this movie, to me, was so painful from beginning to end because the character herself was portrayed as so stupid, so self-involved, so, so archly cute that I wanted, I really, last, I really, I really, I really wanted to bring I, her neck. I'm, well, I'm not recommending the picture, but I am oh, recommending that. you were. No, no, I'm recommending that. It got better as it went along, and by yes. the end, it was almost good enough that you still couldn't recommend it. That's right. Okay. In other words, the beginning of the thing, when you say arch, I don't think she's stupid at all. When okay. you say arch. It is. It is arch. It's yeah. phony. Uh -huh. When she looks to the camera, that's a very powerful movie in a movie. If you look to the camera and start talking to the audience, it doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. It was a whole, obviously a holdover from the play. I think that they should have just told this woman's character. I think she's brighter than the character she's playing. That's true. The, but there are some speeches at the end that I thought were genuinely moving. When she talks about stop being a... Uh, viewing herself as simply a wife and a mother mm -hmm. and start giving time for Shirley Valentine, for this character who she's always been, this person, mm -hmm. that was quite moving to me and I can't deny it. I wish there had been more of that sort of plain talk rather than the archly written talk.